Welcome to the workshop that is titled Spinning Straw into Gold, Turning Turmoil and Dissension into Peace and Harmony. It's an integrative neuroscientific attachment and trauma-informed approach from a biblical, patristic, and liturgical orthodox perspective on healing. Um, and our speaker is Karina Georgiou, and she is a marriage and family therapist in private practice in Torrance, California. She has so much training in psychodynamic modality, integrative body psychotherapy, heart math and heart resilience, and a variety of other somatic modalities, including Feldenkrais and the Intelligent Movement, um, Solutions for Optimal Health. She's also, as if that wasn't enough, she's also a prepare and rich facilitator and trainer. And Karina was the spiritual daughter of the elder Sofian Bogu of Blessed Memory, and Abbas Silwan of Lab served as her mentor and teacher. So join me in welcoming Karina today. Thank you. Such a mouthful. Don't look at that. Today, I'm going to present a few stories. I think we are all sick of COVID and talking, talking about COVID. So I just have one slide. We all been traumatized, collective trauma. We all know what collective trauma was, but now we really feel it on our skin, in our mind, body, in our spiritual life, feeling trapped. And I wonder how many of us, we still feel trapped in our own inner prison, not only the COVID, and very confused. This period of time showed me a lot of problems that we have. And as Father uh, Harper said this morning, I think that these are, this had been really problems that we've been experiencing and maybe not wanting to know a lot of difficulties. I work with many couples, young people, who prepare for marriage, who come to church, and despite this, they are very, very confused. They cannot integrate their life with the church, with the teachings, even if they go to church every Sunday. And the difficulties are not only this, but also the views, the different views in the same church, in the same family, div division, and dissension. So how can we resolve this? Is it any way in which we can do something? Is it any solution for this? Mother Silvana Vlad taught me a lot of things. And she was, I would say, the influencer, the greatest influencer the mother, the only mother uh, in Romania who was loved especially by young people. And she was not a very cuddly person. She would say it as it is in, in your face. And they still loved her. And I think because of her truth, her daring to say the truth. Many times she was asked, I have no purpose in life. It was my purpose. I don't see anything. And her answer all the time, it is to become a saint. So we'll see today, could we become saints in this crazy world? I wonder. So this is the the question, how can we turn, how can we spin the straw of life into the gold of God? The gold of God, not the gold of the story. As I said, I'm going to present you stories today. All sorts of stories, so you can choose whatever you want. We have this timeless story, soul stories. I won't go into the secular mind, body, spirit. I'm going to just go into the Orthodox Christian uh, teachings of the fathers about the 
feeling, reason, and loose, the powers of the souls, because we'll refer to that and we will look at that, not mind, body, spirit, but it's similar. The scientific stories, you heard that it is a scientific method of the church. That's what we're going to try to look at today. We have human science and God's science, the revelation of the Holy Spirit through the Bible, through the teachings of the fathers, and through the sacraments. And today we will see how we can apply the liturgy for our daily life and every day, every moment. I guess you will um, receive these slides. There are some inquiry, self-inquiry, if you want to look at it. If you have some pen and paper, you can. If anything comes to you very fast, not to think, overthink, just whatever comes to you, you can start writing. You can look at this presentation as an application of your, for your life. You can look at your COVID story, so to say, you can look at your life story, you can, you can look at an incident, and turn it into different kind of stories. Fairy tales, personal story, and God's story. Look how amazing human beings we are. I just chose this for the nervous system. The nervous system connects us with God, with the world, with people, with everything. The nervous system is such an intricate, uh, it's, so in, it's designed in such a way that we have everything we need to connect with God. Have you ever thought about this? Also, why am I bringing this? is because you can see if things go wrong, if it's a lot of chaos in our lives, all these nerves can fire in different ways. So then the question is, what is our path, the thread? What do we spin in whatever comes to us? Can we transform chaos into order? The quantum physics says it is order in chaos. But I don't know if we can believe it in ourselves many times. At least this is my story. I invite you today, I'm not going to talk about anything that you see here. I invite you to bring your own orientation, your passion for whatever you are doing. These are a few things that I'm interested in. I try to apply. I believe that we each have an interest, depending on our life, our experience, if we had trauma, if we had whatever life experience we had. So you may have whatever you want to add. If you are a doctor, if you are a nurse, if you are um, whatever you are doing, a physical therapist, um, whatever you are doing, Anything can be integrated if we look at ourselves as mind and body. If we look uh, at the body as the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the truth, it's the temple of the Holy Spirit or the den of idols. Which one it is? How do we look at it to transform it to spin the story of God? God's life in us to achieve the goal, and we'll see. You can ask me about some of those things later or tomorrow if you're interested. But the main point is this. What are your psychological, neurological, cardio, neural, immunological story? How do you see things? How can you can apply them so that you can stir up in the person you work with, curiosity, willingness to change something based on, not only on the thoughts that are very important, but also on the physiology. Knowing that 
it is this automatic response of the body that we may blame people. We may say, oh, they are scaredy cats. They are cowards or they are full of themselves. When actually may be just traumatized, as we will see in this story. Um, so I said this. We look at everything through the powers of the souls and we can apply a lot of things uh, from science. Most important is to look at the body. So what I'm going to talk about, the body as the repository of the sensations, feelings, emotions, and the mind, as we know, the mind is the thoughts, the beliefs. It's less, I think, especially in orthodoxy, talk we're uh, less talking about the body than the, the mind. And I would just say just a word about the spirit. Um, the spirit is not the spirit of the world. It's not the spirit of the high energy and positive energies. It's just the highest. So this is the main uh, orthodox experience uh, and goal to use the noose as the the um, highest attention above the ration, above the uh, rational power, the logic that you, we usually use in science, in the human science, and to go above this and to use, to learn how in a very, very simple way, too simple to be thought of helpful, how to use this to bring this attention through prayer, especially through the Jesus prayer, and to bring the name of the Lord and bring the Holy Spirit in everything we experience. Because that's what is special about orthodoxy. That's what the saints of the church did. They just turned everything into prayer, everything. They brought prayer into everything, and so much that they retained that Holy Spirit and they became relics. This is embodied prayer. Can we reach that place? Maybe not, but God knows that we can even bring a prayer in and that can save a life. Then that can save our children's life. I know I'm dramatic, I know. But it is, I think it's true, because it adds up. A little prayer here, a little prayer there, and God will bring much more on top of what we do. This is the goal, to go to the heart. So, I, um, I drop poorly. Very poorly, I draw. If you see, this is a yellow thread. Yeah? So this is, we're wondering everything. Life gives us this straw, many straws, right? We're full of thoughts, of uh, all sorts of things. And we don't need straws in our home, in our soul, in our heart, in our body. But sure, we receive it, and many times, automatically, we have no idea what we're doing. So the question is, how can we spin this, bring everything that comes in the body? I invite you right now to notice if you experience anything. Are you excited? Are you bored? Are you tired? Before this presentation, I got a little nervous because I was supposed to present tomorrow. And I sat there and I just was going on in my body. And I felt this, someone strangling me. Oh, I cannot do this. The excitement, the cortisol, right? And then I also experienced lower in my heart, this excitement. This excitement for just presenting a little bit of what I learned, especially for, from my Romanian elders. 
So this is important because if I stay just here in my throat, I'm going there talking about it, see? So what am I spinning now? I'm spinning the anxiety or I'm just spinning this excitement of being here with you and sharing and um, as it was said yesterday, Dr. Mamalaki said, we don't feel at home in our profession many times. At least that's how I feel strongly. So now I will just tell you the story. Initially I thought I'm going to tell you my COVID story. But then I thought that's boring. Why would I? You know the Rumpelstiltskin story, most of you, right? It is about the Miller's daughter. And I prefer to call it the Miller's daughter because actually it's about her. It's not about him. So the story goes that he has a daughter. He's a poor Miller. He has a daughter, very beautiful. And sure, there are different versions like every fairy tale. And the king comes and he starts bragging and lying about his daughter, saying that she can spin gold. And the king, so happy, oh, I'm going to try her. If not, you'll die. So what does he do? He puts her in a chamber, locks the door, gives her a chamber full of straw, locks the door and leaves. What does she do? She gets so terrified. What is the fear? The fear of death. She doesn't think. So if you think back of the diagram of the nervous system, what was happening in, inside of her? Fight, flight, freeze, maybe please appease. Why am I saying this? These are all parts of the defenses that are described more and more in trauma, special, especially complex trauma. So now she cannot think. She doesn't think. She just jumps into obey, obeying. Is this obedience? No. This is just please appease. And we wonder, what happened to her? What did she inherit that she was not able to say, no father? Think about this. What did you inherit? The father was a liar. It came to me, the father of lies. Wanting or not, I'm not here to blame the parents. I'm here just to say, that we inherit a lot of things and we have no idea. So what she inherited actually, it's important maybe for some of us to think about in her story, but the most important thing is to see based on the inheritance and sure many other things, our reaction can be very automatic. We don't think. Maybe she was under 25, her prefrontal lobes were not fully developed. I don't know. I'm much older and sometimes I don't feel like I have them fully developed. But the question is, she was trapped. She couldn't, she didn't think. She just worried and complained. She didn't even ask for help. And isn't this the best situation? Someone comes and says, I'm going to help you, right? Isn't this what happens to us? The easy way out, the instant gratification. He asks her for something in return. This is the conditional love. It shouldn't be called conditional love because love is not conditional, right? But think about how many times that father of lies in different forms, and especially in forms of light and healing. Think about these things. Come to us and tell us, I'm gonna help. Give me your jewelry. 
So she gave her her jewelry two times, whatever she had, her wealth, her everything she had. How many times don't I hear people going to psychics, to people promising all sorts of things? I hear this many times, and I wonder sometimes. But she was so desperate that the third time when he came, she didn't have anything to give. So she promised him, do you remember what? To give him her firstborn. What is this firstborn for you? Think about this. She promised something that she didn't have. And she so much wanted to get rid of her pain and to be alive, still not thinking, that she promised her soul. This is my interpretation. The baby, what is more precious for those of you who have children than to give away, to promise a child to the devil? Because he was a little devil there. It doesn't even, it has, he has a name, but we don't know what kind of creature he was. So why I'm taking this time is for you to think about, these are fairy tales, but we can um, update them. They are never old. However you interpret them. This is just my interpretation. Because I think, because I love fairy tale, period. <laughs> I won't say more. Then, what happens? The king is very happy. He got a beautiful, young, wealthy wife. And they, we don't know anything about the king, about, it's never once mentioned look. Well, so she survived, she married the king, he was the king, the big shot, the good life, right? So this was the gold spun by the devil. Did anyone know this? No, at least not at the moment, at least not the father, not the king, not the girl. Just the little, the little devil. So this is not the true gold of healing. She survived, she kept her life, but not fully. And she didn't know, like most of us, like many, young people and not only young people. I do not want to say that is just the young. So I would call this, we call ways, stories, the way of the story, the thread of the story, the spinning, the, we spin threads. If you see how people spin, it's a thread. So this is a thread of Paul's goal. So they live happily for like one year, and then a baby comes. And Rumpelstiltskin comes to get the baby. What happens with her? She wakes up. She reaches the end of her rope. Healing starts at the end of your rope. She reaches this end of the fake goal. I can only imagine how terrified she was to lose a child. I can only imagine. So then this shock made her start on a journey. The story says that she sent messengers, then she went to the highland, then she, she herself, or she sent people, whatever the version says. She goes herself, or she sends the messengers, the powers of her soul, but it's an action. And what happened before she started 
the action. She stopped. She paused. She became, how we call in the secular world, mindful, vigilant. And that's when the shift began. She thought a lot. She thought for a whole night, what am I going to do? Then the thought was followed by the action. The action to do something. Was it difficult for her? I think it was very difficult because at times she was desperate, as we are at times, right? When we try and try and we think and we try to figure things out and looks like no, nothing is there. But also notice, nobody talks about the God here. It's only about the evil. And what is the need here? To find out the name of the evil. So the power of naming something is very important. The power of, navy, of, of naming how this period affected you, COVID, no COVID, vaccine, no vaccine, whatever it was. Because this period was a tough period for all of us in different ways. And even if it was not very hard, very difficult, we didn't get sick or everything went fine, it's still, it's impossible. This is a collective trauma. It's impossible, especially for, for caregivers, like most of us here. It is impossible not to be affected. So what did she do? She, from the, this is the, nervous system story. The story from going from the depth, from the unconscious, from the automatic behavior, from the automated, transmitted, inherited habits and all of this into, so the, the um, autonomic nervous system, right? What is this autonomic nervous system? It's just survival, protection. I, I want to say, just as a parenthesis, I believe that this, uh, this is more, this is a survival. God put this in us. We need to run away if we are in danger. So this, the Miller's daughter, she had to do something. And she did the best she could. It's obvious. She couldn't run away. She couldn't think. She did the best she could. She suffers the consequences, yes. But she did the best she could. She protected life. She protected this life that God gives us. Very precious. So when we accuse people of different things, I would say, let's think about their patterns, maybe their unconscious traumas, um, to look at them with a little more not even love, because many of us don't have, or sometimes, especially when we have very difficult patients and clients, right? But just a little work to step aside and to look at them with curiosity. What is this person in front of me needing from me? What is trying to say and saying in convoluted ways? Because they don't know how to say, they don't dare, they are ashamed, who knows what. So she manages to name the evil. And what happens after that? Do you remember? That is a strange story. So before we go forward, you can think of your story in terms of the autonomic nervous system story. She goes from the fight, flight, freeze of the deep autonomic nervous system from the into uh, the limbic system, the emotional, the emotional filter 
and then goes higher into the frontal lobes, thinking. She starts thinking and naming. All, she uses all of her cognitive powers. What amazing it is to get awake, to resurrect, actually. And think about this. This is without God. What about us that we know God? So again, put your story, your people you work with story in terms of the nervous system story. I use the polyvagal theory for this. Uh, many different ways to do this. In a psychological story, the method you, you love, you feel, you relate to, uh, you studied, in whatever way you can put your story, but this would be interesting to do this to expand your view and not get locked. For example, when I invite my clients to look at their situation, especially the ones who are very uh, hard on themselves, to put it in a nervous system story, the shame kind of starts dissipating. They understand, oh, I was not a coward, I had to run away. Or, yeah, I was raped, I had to, I froze because my body froze. It was not because I was not brave enough. It was just the way my body, God-given body, helped me do. So this is the way. We go, sorry. We go from the deep, that's what it, this is meant to be. This make, makes sense, more sense for me. Uh, I hope for you too. So we go from deep, from the, what did I do? Oh, sorry. My rescuer. <laughs> I pressed something twice. Okay. But I will back. Okay, thank you. So we go from the body, from the depth of the body, into the medulla, the lower brain, into the amygdala, and then we use our brain, our cortical area, prefrontal lobes. And then, what do we do? Is that enough? What do you think? Doesn't seem to be enough, right? It's not enough. We can name everything. We can be very smart. We can go from training to training and still not improve in God's way. I think this is my story. I'm a little of a uh, knowledge junk, you know, seeking knowledge, knowledge, until something shifts and you start thinking, is this worth it? Is this enough? So the question is, what is the shift for you? What do you choose? Now the fairy tale ends and your story begins. This story had an abrupt ending. It just ends. Some stories say that Rumpelstiltskin was so mad that he um, stomped his feet and he went into the ground, and others say that he flew away. Who cares? The thing is that he was, the girl put a name on it. Well, she, I don't think she was not a girl anymore, right? She went through so much, so much, from so many hardships that she grew up, right? So here is your story. And the question is, what do you choose? You choose to stay in this fairy tale? Is this naming the evil enough? What's the, the, the rest of the life, your life going to be? Or you choose God's story. So we see we have many ways. 
many ways. And we take uh, always the ways, um, now I'm thinking um, Red Riding Hood, Little Red Riding Hood, right? But we get in the wolf's mouth many times, right? I think all of us, because that's life and that's how we learn. But God's story is, I am the way. I am the life, I am the truth, and I am the life. The question is, how do we get there? So this is what you choose. The fathers of the church tell us to go in the inner chamber of the heart. So think about being trapped during COVID, being trapped with people you don't like, people you don't get along, with illnesses that you don't like, with difficult clients, with difficult patients, with difficulties all over the place. What do you do with that? This is the question. Many of us know a lot, go to church, know the Bible, know the teachings of the fathers, uh, know about the sacraments, but we still don't apply much. So how can we apply this? This is what Mother Silvana taught me, taught many of us, about the inner liturgy. This is a practice, this is a way, this is God's way to the truth, to get the life. And it's so easy to apply. It is difficult because we have to stay still, we have to be quiet, and we have to be hopeful, but it is possible. How do we turn everything like the saints did? Remember, what's our purpose? To become saints. Maybe not to become saints. This can be a purpose. Most of us won't become saints, but at least this union with God, this union through prayer, this is the way this is a truth to unite with him in prayer. This is the name. So this is not the name of the evil. Now we go further. We left the evil. We named it. We know the evil. What's next? The name of the Lord. Healing starts at the end of your rope. What is the end of your rope? you. This is the end of your rope. Right? The end of your rope is the cross and then it has this for the tears. To wipe the tears. But this is God's grace with every prayer. With every Jesus prayer. And this is what Mother Silvana taught us about the inner liturgy at all times and in all places. Okay. I would want to invite you to practice with me. For some of you, this may be very easy, but for most of us, it's not. So while I talk, could you join me in doing this? And then you can get the slides, yeah? So just um, if you feel comfortable enough, you can close your eyes or just not look at me, go inside yourself. First, put your, feet, put your feet down on the floor and just contact. This is grounding. Just feel your feet on the floor, feel your thighs on the pew, the contact with your back, and just try to be comfortable and to become present. It was a lot of information. It may be difficult for you to become present, but just in this practice, we will not, we will try not to think. 
You can say a prayer. If you're used to the Jesus prayer, you can just say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. Or just have mercy on Jesus. Lord, have mercy. And in this way, keep your attention just on the words of the prayer and keep away any other thoughts. We want to have no thoughts interfering and just to go inside the body to notice what is happening. As in the holy liturgy, to stand. Let us stand aright. Let us stand in all. Let us be attentive. Let us bow our heads down to the Lord and lift up our hearts. This is pretty much the posture, the sanctity of our every moment. We can turn every moment in a sacred moment. So keep your mind on prayer and then breathe quietly, maybe a little slower, a little deeper. Find a rhythm. Don't struggle. And notice any sensations, any feelings, any emotions in different parts of your body. Whatever it is right now, don't try to find anything. Just whatever your attention comes, settles on. And in this place of being present, anchored, settled in your body, mind quiet just on the name of Jesus, spinning his name into your mind and allowing it to go into whatever you're experiencing right now. And whatever, especially what is, is uncomfortable, sensations, feelings, everything that comes, you can offer it to God. It's an inner movement. It's a, an internal movement of offering. You're offering, you're offering everything in prayer. And in this way, you sanctify like the saints did without doing this so purposefully, but in their own saintly way. Just turning everything into prayer, bringing the Holy Spirit through the breath in the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. And wait in there. Do not run away. Do not hide. This will give you patience. This is a way to deal with things and go through the pain, not over the pain. Unfortunately, we don't have much time, so I want you to come slowly back to the, to the room. It was very short. Usually, if you do this every day, 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, in time, in 40 days, you can change the way of perceiving everything just in offering, offering. You don't have to do anything else. This is something that can be done integrated with any uh, psychological treatment you do, with anything. This is for a session. If you go into the session offering yourself and you have, you're lucky to have a client who can go there with you, that is the session becomes an offering. The treatment becomes an offering. Everything becomes an offering. This is a way of living life. Uh, this is in Romanian. This is the heart of man is the altar of God, um, holy bread. 
the place of rest, God's place of rest. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want you say it. I'll tell you. So in this way, you, we can learn to stop running away from pain, to tolerate pain, to tolerate suffering, to turn it into prayer. This is not uh, um, uh, an exchange or, or a psychotherapy. Many times people need psychotherapy, but this is a, a wonderful addition to any psychotherapy. This, Mother Silvana says that this is truly one of the most ascetic lessons for us. So we turn, we spin the straw of life into prayer. Most of us, when we reach the end of our rope, but at least there God waits for us, for the true, for the real gold. And I love Saint uh, Porphyrios. He's the one who is full of hope. Uh, the cure will come when we love God passionately. How can we go, uh, love God? Moment by moment, by offering Him whatever we have. The good, the bad, and especially the ugly. That's what he needs from us. And that's how we cleanse our hearts. So when we cleanse our hearts, we can reach the noose. And then there, staying with the attention on prayer in the heart, we, we become the altar of the Lord. So may God bless us all to reach this place. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'd love to know how you would integrate this. If you have any questions, I'm planning to do some workshops about this, more extended, and the forgiveness liturgy also, and many more things. Thank you.